Good morning and welcome to First Memorial. Thank you for joining us this morning. Please join me in the call to worship, which is printed in your bulletins. Blessed be the God of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> God has given us an inheritance that is imperishable and unfading. For although we have not seen Jesus, we love him. And although we have not seen him, we believe in him. Please join me in the opening hymn of praise, hymn number 108, Christ is Alive. God has been made known to us in deeds of power, signs, and wonders, and will not abandon us if we confess the truth about our lives. Let us therefore pray with one voice. God made My friends, God is our refuge and will not abandon us. That is a promise of peace and joy. Share that peace with one another. People of God, you have heard the good news of Christ's substitutionary atonement. Yes, 
children of God, believe this good news of what God has done for us in Christ. Without moving from where you now stand, please take the next few moments to share a warm greeting and a sincere sign of God's peace with those around you. The gospel lesson for today comes from the gospel according to John, the 20th chapter, beginning at the 19th verse. Listen, and let the Holy Spirit move you. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. And this is a special moment and a new experience for us and our children.
We're going to share this then. Okay, so we're going to do something new this year. We're a little late after Christmas, but the kids have been working on a Christmas pageant for you guys. Um, so they'd like to perform it now. I mean, oh my gosh, Easter. Sorry. I'm getting way ahead of myself. And Easter, Easter pageant. So we're a week past Easter, but we still wanted to share it with you guys. Two weeks, am I now? I don't know. Okay. Uh, all right, so we're going to begin. And sorry, the, um, there are hymns in here that we're all going to sing as a congregation, and we're just going to sing the first verse of them, but it's all in the bulletin. All right, ready? Girls. Come over here. Come over here. Stand so they can see you. Stand so they can see all of you. Ready? Go. Alleluia. Sing with gladness on this happy holy morn. Hallelujah. The Christ has risen on this joyful Easter morn. It had not. Oh God! I'm so sorry. It had not been an easy time in Jerusalem, and things went from bad to worse by the hour. From the moment Christ died on the cross, the earth turned dark, as the sun had gone away, and hearts became as darkened as the sky. What happened? Everyone asked themselves. This man they, cru they had crucified and had worked miracles. He had brought people back from the dead, but he could not save himself. He was supposed to be a king and change the world forever, but he died like a criminal. What, it, what had gone wrong? Was it all a hoax? The man who died on the cross was gone forever, and many of the hopes of his followers died with him. And we're going to sing the first verse of, Were you there when they crucified my Lord? But Jesus didn't have a tomb. His only belongings were the clothes on his back. Sorry. And after he died, the soldiers gambled for his meager garments. Then a rich man who knew Jesus and considered him a friend went to Pilate and asked if he could have Jesus' body. Pilate agreed, so his friend wrapped Jesus' body in clean cloths and had placed it in the tomb that they had purchased for himself. In he then rolled the enormous stone in front of the opening of the tomb. Pilate had the stone sealed to the tomb and placed guards on it so no one could steal the body of Jesus. It was over. This man, whom they had put so much faith in, was gone, and they had felt cheated. They wanted to believe all the wonderful things he had taught them, but they had no heart for it. Jesus was dead. He was just a man after all, and all their hopes for a new and better world were gone and nothing could bring him back. Now we're gonna sing, this little light of mine is gone and will not shine. It's to this, the same tune as this little light of mine.
that night and through the day that followed, it was as if the world had lost heart when they lost their savior. People ached with confusion and disappointment. Until the very last minute, they had believed that Jesus would turn a miracle and save himself, but it never happened. Before he died, he cried, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They had not only lost their Lord, they lost all their hopes for the things that Jesus taught them about love, eternity, and life after death. Believers had lost so much, they wondered how they could bear it. When Christ was alive, we, all, we were all members of his army, and we were so proud to be serving the Lord. Why, this was our favorite song, and we used to sing it with pride. Jesus was our leader, and without him, there's no cause and nothing to strive for. Tomorrow, we will go all our separate ways but we will never forget how proud we were to serve in the Lord's army. A lot of things happened that made the situation worse. When the soldiers took Jesus away, Peter was frightened. He knew okay. He sorry. He knew that he and the other disciples could be in such a danger as Jesus in such danger as much as Jesus. When a woman asked, didn't I see you with Jesus? Peter shook his head. I don't even know him, Peter said. Later, someone else asked, aren't you one of them? I am not, Peter said. Then others pointed fingers and cried, are you one of them? I know it. When, when Peter denied it for the third time, a rooster crowed. It reminded Peter of what Jesus had said, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter was so ashamed and humiliated that he covered his face with his hands and sobbed. Judas, who thought Jesus would save himself and show the world his power, realized what a horrible mistake he had made. For 30 pieces of silver, he had betrayed the Lord and was responsible for his death. Judas could not bear the guilt of what he had done, and he hanged himself. People stuttered as they remembered the sign that had been placed over Jesus' head as he hung on the cross. As if to mock him and all he stood for, the sign said, this is Jesus, King of the Jews. In all the confusion and disappointment, people didn't know what to think, what to believe, or what to pray for. All was lost. They felt as if they had been robbed, not only of the truths they had treasured, but everything that had meaning to them. A shadow hung over the earth and over the hearts of those who had known Jesus. On Sunday morning, the hearts still heavy with grief and smothering their soul, another day started. Mary Magdalene and his mother Mary rose, rose early and walked to the tomb where Jesus' body had laid. In their shock and confusion, the stone, had co had co the stone that covered the tomb had rolled away. It stood wide open. Then they could not believe their eyes. An angel stood inside the tomb and radiated light in every direction kind of like lightning, and his garments were so white the women squinted against the glare. The guards were so frightened they could not move and stood like dead men. The angel smiled at the women and said, Don't be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified, but he is not here. He has been raised, just like he said. Jesus has risen from the dead. Then he told the woman to go and find the disciples and tell them that Jesus had risen. With their hearts bounding with joy, they ran to find the disciples and tell them what had happened. Suddenly, a figure appeared before them and said, Peace be with you. The women were overwhelmed and took hold of his, his feet and worshipped him. Jesus sensed their awe and said, Don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and I will meet them there. The women raced on, knowing in their hearts the news they had carried would change the world forever. Christ had ridden from the dead, Everything Jesus said was true, and no armies, kings, or leaders could have changed what had happened. Christ was risen from the dead. Heaven, eternal life, and many mansions he talked about were true. 
Christ the Lord had risen, and his message of peace, love, and joy would live forever. And now we're going to sing, Christ the Lord has risen today. So that is our Easter pageant. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, the kids, I think, had fun kind of practicing for it, right? Austin says no, but yes, they did. So we hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, guys. All right. The mic drop. Smile, guys. Don't, Sebastian. <laughs> All right. Smile. One, two, three. All right. There we go. All right. All right. Now everybody look at Pastor. Right. Good. Thank you, guys. Right, go. Go have a seat in the back. Sisters and brothers, we have no good apart from God. Therefore, let us keep God at the forefront of our minds and give as generously as we are able from all that we have been given that others may also receive from the fullness of God. Let us unite our hearts in prayer. Generous God, you are our portion and our cup. In you, our hearts are glad, our souls rejoice, and our bodies rest. Bless and multiply our offerings and pledges, that they may bring the joy of your presence more deeply into the world. Amen.
I just want to punctuate the children's presentation this morning with a reminder that Eastertide runs for several weeks. The story will be read in various forms as part of our scripture lesson every week for the next few weeks. So what they did today was very appropriate for today. Even if we got stuck in a groove of habits where when we have pageants we think of Christmas. I appreciate the fact that Megan and the children were so adventurous to try something new. I know you appreciate that. Now we get to do something else. Later than usual, but not too late, I hope. We are going to install, present or absent, all those that have been elected to new terms or are fulfilling old ones, but were never installed because of the pandemic. So, listen, as it is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 to 7 and verse 27, there are varieties of gifts. You're welcome to lip sync this if you want. There are varieties of gifts, but it is the same spirit who gives them. And there are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is accomplished. To each of us is given a gift of the Spirit to be used for the common good. Together we are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Today we celebrate God's gifts and those willing to put them to use in the particular offices of trustee, deacon, and elder. All those about to be named have served in these capacities before. But if you are among those named by the clerk of session on behalf of election by the congregation, please come forward and face the congregation for the right of installation. The presentation is made by the clerk of session. To serve as trustees, Eileen Begley, Eric Berg, George Colthart, Donald Lansing, Jack Nielsen, Renee Nielsen, and to serve as deacons, Monica Eisenberger, Roger Lindahl, Cynthia Murdoch. And to serve as elders, Megan Berg, Jeanette Felch, and Carolyn Wolf. Join your fellow installees. Okay. You'll need this if you're going to participate. And if you're not, what are you doing here? No, she can have her own. It's 18 point type. She can't read, she needs her glasses. It's 18 points? I'm sorry. Thanks for being here today. The congregation is now going to stand with you and face you and participate in the opening promises that we are making as part of this ritual. On your feet. They're waiting for buses. I don't know where they think they're going. Let us all, trusting in the gracious mercy of God, respond to the following questions regarding our common faith. You have nothing to read. Just listen and respond appropriately. Do we turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do we? We do. We do. Do we turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as our Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? Do we? We do. 
Will we be Christ's faithful disciples, obeying his word and showing his love? With God's help, will we? With God's help, we do. In accordance with the Book of Order of the Presbyterian Church in the United States of America, I am required to ask all officers the following constitutional questions while the congregation returns to the seated position. Okay, for all of you, do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Do you? I do. Do, <laughs> do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be by the Holy Spirit the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? Do you? I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? Do you and will you? I, I do and I will. Will you pass the test I give at the end with the papers down? Oh, that's not in here. They're not laughing. Will you fulfill your office in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you? We will. Will you be governed by our church's polity? That means constitution. And will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? Will you? I will. Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Will you? I will. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Do you? I do. Will you seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? I will. I, my page didn't turn as fast as yours. Huh? huh? Just to the trustees. Raise your hand so we know who we're listening to. There we go. Will you be a faithful trustee taking your best care of the building and business of our church home? Will you? I will. Just to the deacons. Will you be a faithful deacon teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need. And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? I will. And just to the elders, will you be a faithful elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in the governing bodies of the church? That includes Presbytery. And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? I will. I will. Do we, the members of First Memorial Presbyterian Church and Congregation, accept those just named as trustees, deacons, or elders, respectively, as chosen by God through the voice and vote of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? We will. We will. Do we further encourage them to respect their decisions and to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? Do we? Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for the generations of faithful and generous followers of Jesus Christ who have built a heritage of ministry and mission in this and previous buildings as evidence of your love and concern for the people of this region. We thank you for the leaders you have raised up across the decades who answered the call to attend the meetings, perform the tasks, provide the stewardship, and offer the prayers that energize the programs which have touched countless lives. Today we have heard the promises of members of this current generation, none first-timers, 
but seasoned repeaters who know the cost of service and have stepped forward to serve again. We are grateful for their positive response to our need and your need. We are grateful to you for the way your Holy Spirit has worked through them in the past and beseech you to bless us through them yet again. May they follow Jesus' example and claim his values as their own, that you may continue to find us as a congregation faithful in bringing your good news to another generation. And all God's children said, Welcome to this ministry. Can you hear me? Welcome to this ministry. Welcome to this ministry. Welcome to this ministry, many hat person. Welcome to this ministry. Thanks for taking the day off to be with us. <laughs> Welcome to this ministry. Please be seated. Just so you know, Sin was um, watching me on Facebook, and she said she would, she will. So when she was answering her question, when you were uh, talking to the trustees. Oh, Happy Easter to our friends of the Orthodox faith who are celebrating today, so our pageant was timely as well for them. Yep. We are thankful for the rain, the firefighters and the MTs and the police. This past week has been uh, very stressful on all of them. Condolences to the Dorr family and the Wharton Fire Department on the passing of Chief Kyle Dorr. Thoughts and prayers are for the Berg family, Richard Berg, who has been put in hospice care this past week. And our ongoing list, Walt, Wayne, Donna, Bob, Karen, Kendra, Hunter, Dawn, Gina, Dora, Ashley, Carrie, Lily, Morgan, Dick, Jen, Tony, John, Nushabi, Mario, Paulette, Dolores, Dominic, Kathy, Michael, Betty, and Sandy. And if anybody needs some prayers, please reach out to us and let us know, and we will add you to the list. Thank you. And I think the news on Lisa's mother's operation is very positive at this time. So we are thanking God for that. You remember she had a pacemaker installed on Thursday. Different kind of installation than what we just did here. Again, you're not laughing. Are you with me? Whew. We believe, so we pray. O oh God, our creator and protector, by whose mercy and might the world transitions from dusk to dawn and from season to season in the perpetual activities of caring and sharing, growing and loving, receiving and giving, all as evidence of your amazing grace. As we begin another week, we give into your hands our unfinished tasks, our unsolved problems, and our unfulfilled hopes trusting that you are still Lord of, over all. To your great love and mercy, we commit each other and all for whom we pray, knowing that you alone are our sure defender. Continue to work through our life experiences to teach us your will and your ways as inspired and directed by your Holy Spirit. Work through our meager efforts at passing the faith on to others as it has been handed down to us. And hear these in all our prayers with as much clarity as you hear our Lord's prayer when, he, when we follow his example and pray his words. Our Father who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Our parting hymn this morning is 388, O oh Jesus, I Have Promised. In the week and weeks ahead, may you be touched with awe and wonder and amazement at God's faithfulness to keep his promises, to hear our prayers, and to accompany us every step of our way. This we take to heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated for a moment of reflection and inspiring music.